Welcome back to the Data Professor YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Chinin Nanta Senamad, and I'm an Associate Professor of Bioinformatics. On this YouTube channel, we cover about data science concepts and practical tutorials. So if you're into this type of content, please consider subscribing. So in the previous video, I have shown you how you can apply machine learning on a computational drug discovery project. Particularly, we downloaded a data set derived from the study of Delani. And the data set is essentially a collection of compounds along with their molecular solubility value, which is a important physical chemical property of compounds on whether it can be solubilized in water to what extent. And so some of you might be wondering, what if you want to collect original data? Let's say that you want to create a new data science project for your portfolio and you want something that is new, original, has never been done before, then this video is for you. Because in biology, there is a lot of unknown that is waiting to be researched about. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how you can retrieve and download biological activity data of compounds from the Chembo database, which you can subsequently use to construct machine learning models, which is also technically known as quantitative structure activity relationship. And so the development of such QSAR or QSAR models holds great value for drug discovery efforts. Particularly, it allows us to understand the origins of the biological activity and the interpretation of the model will allow us to understand how we can design a better drug. And so such data that you're going to collect and download today by following along with this video, not only will allow you to build your data science portfolio, but may also initiate or scratch the surface towards the development of novel therapeutic agents or novel drugs. And so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that you wanna do now is head over to the GitHub of the data professor and then click on the code repository and then scroll down, click on Python, scroll down and click on the CDD ML part one bioactivity data. And then right click on the raw link and you wanna save it into your computer. Or if you would like to follow along on the Google Colab, you are more than welcome to do so. So what you want to do is go to Colab and then click on the file open notebook and then click on the GitHub tab and then type for data professor, enter. And then it's going to be the first file that you see here, CDDML part one. Okay, and then you want to click on that and then it should open up a new notebook for you. But I already have that, so I'm going to follow the one that I have open right here. So the exciting part of this video is that you're going to collect original data. So it's gonna be the same data that researchers in the field are collecting and publishing about. And so today you're going to have the opportunity to contribute to computational drug discovery. Okay, so the database that we're going to use is called Chembo Database, and it is a database comprising of more than 2 million compounds, and it is compiled from more than 76,000 documents. And the version as of March 25, 2020 is Chembo version 26. Okay, and so the first thing that you want to do here is to install the Chembo web resource client, and so we're going to use the pip install here. So this library will allow you to download the biological activity data directly from the Chembo database. But before we do that, let me show you how the Chembo database actually looks like. So you can search on Google for Chembo, C-H-E-M-B-L. Okay, so let's say that we're going to search for coronavirus. And then we're going to go with the Search for coronavirus in all targets. We're going to click on that. 
And so the targets here refers to the target proteins or target organism that the drug will act on. So biologically, these compounds will come into contact with the protein or the organism and induce a modulatory activity towards it. It could either be to activate the protein or the organism or to inhibit it, okay? And so this will give us seven targets here. And if we scroll down, we're going to see the type of the target would be comprising of organism and single protein. And the single protein will be SARS coronavirus 3C-like proteinase and the replicase polyprotein 1AB. And so these are for the SARS coronavirus 1. And so as you can see that the SARS coronavirus 2 is not yet deposited in this database. And so we're going to work with what we have here. Okay, so let's head back to the notebook. And the Chembo web resource client should have already been installed. And let's proceed with importing the library. So here we're going to import the pandas as PD. And we're going to use from Chembo web resource client dot new client, import new client. Okay. And then in this section, we're going to search for the target protein. And so it's essentially going to be the same process that we're searching right here. In the search bar, we type in coronavirus. So we're going to do exactly in the code. But first, we're going to assign new client.target to the target variable. And then we're going to create a variable called target underscore query equals to target.search. And then the search keyword will go here. And then we're going to create a target's data frame. And then we're going to assign the the target query inside the argument using the from dictionary function okay and then finally we're going to display the contents of the data frame and then we're going to run this in order to see that okay and so here we see seven results and it's the same thing that we see here seven targets okay so seven results here and then notice that there are two single protein right here and the rest are organism so same thing right here we have two single protein and the rest being organism, okay? And so in this tutorial, we're going to use the single protein for our further investigation. Okay, and so let's go to the next step. So in this section, we're going to select and retrieve bioactivity data for SARS coronavirus 3C-like proteinase, which is the fourth entry right here. Or actually, it's the fifth entry, but it has the index number of four. Okay, so it actually is fifth entry. Let's call it fifth entry. Okay, and so let's run the cell. And so notice that the Chembo ID here is Chembo 3927. So this is the target ID. So it's a unique identification of the target. Okay, and so here we're going to define a variable called activity and we're going to use new client dot activity and then afterward we're going to define a variable called res and then we're going to assign it the block of code here which is activity dot filter and then in the argument here we're going to use the target chembo id equals to the selected target and then we're going to have the closing parenthesis as part of the filter function and then we're going to apply another filter which is to select only the values containing IC50 for the column called standard type. Okay, and so I'm going to show you that in just a moment. And let's show the contents of the data frame. Because there are so many columns. Why don't I show only the first three? Because the font is rather big and we need to access the scroller here. Okay, so let's find the column that I was talking about. The standard type. So here, standard type, IC50. Okay, so we're going to select only the IC50 here. And so let me show you what are the unique values in the standard type column. Okay, and so we see that there are only IC50 here. Okay, so for this particular data set, it wouldn't matter because all of the value here are the same and they are IC50. 
but in cases of other data set, there might be a combination of other bioactivity unit types. So it might be IC50, it might be EC50, or it could be percent activity. So when we define a particular standard type here, it will make our data set more uniform. And so we won't have a mixture of different bioactivity units. Okay, so we're going to use only the IC50 type. And the standard value is the potency of the drug. And so the number here represents the potency. And so the lower the number, the better the potency of the drug becomes. Okay. And likewise, the higher the number, the worse the potency becomes. Okay. So ideally, we want to find a number of the standard value to be as low as possible, meaning that the inhibitory concentration at 50% will have a low concentration, meaning that in order to elicit 50% of the inhibition of a target protein, you would need lower concentration of the drug. Let's think of it this way. The number here reflects the concentration of the drug. And so the lower the concentration that is required, the better it is. Because if you have higher number, it means that you require more amount of the drug in order to produce the same inhibition at 50%. And so analogously, let's say that if you could take 5 milliliter of a medication versus 5 liter of medication, right? But which is impossible in order to produce the same effect. Which one would you choose, right? Okay, so something to think about. So let's go back to here. All right, and so finally, we're going to write out the data frame into a CSV file, and we're going to call it the bioactivitydata.csv, and we're going to have the index number to be false because we don't want the index number to be in the resulting CSV file. Okay, so let's write that out, and let me mount my Google Drive into the notebook, and so I'm going to click here. Okay, and so I'm going to paste in the authorization code, enter. All right, so it's mounted. Um, I think I might have already run this because the data folder has probably been created, but let me check. Okay, so it's right here, data. So it has already been created. Okay, but for you guys, let's say I create data too, okay? So for you guys creating a new folder called data in your Colab notebook folder for the first time would probably work. So let's continue. And so we're gonna copy the bioactivity data here into the folder. And let's outest that. And we're gonna see the bioactivity data. So let me also add the dash L function here. So I can also see the time at which it is created. And it is created on April 29th, so it's right now. And so let's see the content of the CSV. So let's list this again in our current working directory. And we're gonna take a glimpse of the contents of the bioactivity data. And it looks like this. So it's a CSV data, okay? And then we're gonna proceed to the next step. We're going to do some handling of the missing data, if there is any. And then we're gonna drop compounds with missing standard value. So the thing is, we have already dropped any missing values here. Okay, so apparently for this data set, there is no missing data. However, this code might come in handy for other data sets where there is missing data. Okay, so let's proceed to the next step. And so here we're going to do some data pre-processing of the bioactivity data. So for the benefit of creating machine learning models where we could classify compounds into three categories as either being a active compound, an inactive compound, or an intermediate compound. And so the active compound will be defined as drugs that have IC50 of less than one micromolar, and one micromolar is equal to 1,000 nanomolar. And so a drug having IC50 value of less than 1,000 nanomolar will be classified as active, and a drug having 
being IC50 value greater than 10,000 will be classified as inactive and drugs having value in between 1,000 and 10,000 will be called intermediate. So in some of the research projects that we have normally done, we either use the two class or the three class. Okay, and so we're going to use the conditions as defined here that I have already told you about. And so we're going to run this block of code. And then we're going to iterate over the molecule Chembo ID column. Let's go back here. Let me show you. Molecule. Molecule Chembo ID. Okay. So this data set is comprised of many compounds. And a compound is a drug, a molecule. A molecule is a chemical structure that produces a modulatory activity, or in other words, it exerts some effect on the target protein. Kind of like when you take medication and the medication exerts some effect on you. Like you might feel drowsy, you might feel thirsty, which are the side effects, but the drug will directly act on the target protein in order to produce the desired biological effect which ultimately cures your symptoms. And that is why you're taking drugs, right? Or medication, right? And so you see that this is the Chembo molecule ID. So each compound will be described by a molecule Chembo ID. And so each row represents one compound, and there might be a possibility that multiple rows will contain the same molecule Chembo ID. And if that is the case, for simplicity, we're gonna keep only one of them, okay? Because we don't want any redundancy in the data set. Right, so for the molecule Chembo ID, let me show you before we iterate. So DF2 dot molecule Chembo ID. So it essentially contains the Chembo ID as I have mentioned. So they are the unique identification number of each molecule. And so we're gonna iterate through each of them, right? But first we're gonna create a empty variable called mo CID. And so in each iteration of the for loop here, we're gonna append the molecule Chembo ID into this empty variable. So let's run that. And then we're gonna see that the mo CID contains the molecule Chembo ID again. Okay, and here we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna define an empty variable called canonical smiles. And then we're going to iterate over the canonical smiles. And then we're gonna append it to the empty variable here. And then we're gonna do the same for the standard value, which is the IC50. But actually, this is only one way of doing things. So this might actually be a complicated way. Actually, another way would be to simply So in df2 dot molecule chembo. Okay, so we just call selection equals to whatever we want. So we want the molecule chembo ID and we want the canonical smiles and we want the standard value and then df2 we have the selection and then we're going to assign this to df3 actually this might be a easier way df3 right so we get the data frame here containing the three columns that we needed and actually we could do the same here as well canonical smiles okay i have to run it first probably have to run this. Okay. And so it gives you the same thing. So I'm not sure. And we also want the bioactivity class as well. Which do we have? Yeah, we have it here, bioactivity class. And so we're gonna just append to it. And so to df3, we're gonna have PD concat and then the F3 with the bioactivity class and then axis equals to one. No. Oh, so there are series and data frame objects. Oh, okay, so it's a list. So this needs to be made into a 
data frame or a series that would work all right so it works so same thing here does it look the same yes it looks the same okay so actually this might be a easier way so let me copy this Okay, so I'm offering an alternative method here as well, and I'm gonna move it below this, okay? Okay, so select either way. Okay, so now we're gonna create a CSV file for the pre-processed bioactivity data, and we're assigning df3 dot to CSV, and then the name of the file, and then the index will be false, and that's all. So let's check the file, ls. Okay, so here it is, the pre-processed data. So let's copy that into the Google Drive. Pre-processed data. Let's have a look. All right, so we have both of them here. So let me annotate this a bit. All right, so congratulations. You have successfully downloaded the biological activity data from the Chambo database. And so now we could use this for subsequent machine learning model building. And I'm going to cover that in a future video. And so please stay tuned to that. While in the meantime, you could also use this data set that you have created on a data science project of your own. Or you could also modify the search query at the beginning. So let me show you. Instead of using coronavirus, you could use another keyword. Let's say aromatase. So the aromatase is an enzyme as part of the cytochrome P450, which is responsible for breast cancer. And so the goal of drug discovery effort is to find a compound or a molecule that will be able to inhibit the function of the aromatase enzyme. Okay, and so here is the human aromatase enzyme. So as you can see, try out different keywords and see what protein you have. And then you could use this novel data set in your own data science project. So the possibilities are endless. And so now you have original data that you could play around with that no one else in the world might have because you guys might be using different keywords, right? And so this will be a novelty in itself. And so if this video was helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please subscribe to the channel for more awesome content on data science. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And so please enjoy the journey. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.